Welcome to Art House Productions radio play of Martin Casella's Black Tom Island. It's a sweltering day in late July 1916. In Europe, the Great War rages on. But America has stayed neutral, supporting neither the British nor the Germans. In Jersey City, New Jersey, two young immigrants live in a tiny one-room flat. Six months pregnant, Ava Babick fusses over a stove as her husband Martin returns from a day on the strike line. Miriam tuto krajinu. English. Precho. Because. Say in English. I love this country. Your hands are dirty. Go wash them. Hey, t- take care with the basin. Don't splash on the rug. Yes, I must not cause more work for you. You work very hard. Why do you wear a coat in this heat? I was hiding a good surprise under the coat so no one would see. Hmm, a surprise for me. Perhaps a surprise for you. Hmm. Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. Manchel, don't scrub so hard. There is no oil on your hands now. Gently. Lubitsch, <laughs> Lovick, I forget. No job, no oil to scrub. Eh, dry your fingers. Sit, rest. We eat soon. But first, Babos come to Kiss. Say kiss. Kiss. Stehitri. I am not smart. Did you stop at the bar? Did you have a drink? I stopped at the bar. I did not drink. My head mm. is clear. I saved my money to hide here under the statue of Our Lady. Not many dollars for the Virgin. She wants more money. Fifty cents a day to walk a picket line. That is big money. Big money will come soon. The Virgin will smile and say, Martin Babak, what a good manjal you are. A good provider. Excellent English word. When I am a good provider, we go back home to Slovakia. I think you had a drink at the bar. No drink. You promised me, Manjelka, when we had much money, we would go home. My happiness is because soon you will keep your promise. Will I? Yes. We will leave this country. That today I love. We will go home soon. Sooner than you think. So, what did Father Prosco say today when you talk? He knows a woman who needs a laundress. A cochasto? Three times a week. Shirts, linens. (laughs) I have made you smile again. I smile because perhaps soon you will not have to work at all. You are handsome when you smile. I like my smiling, handsome husband. This money we save for the Virgin. It is good. Yes, very good. John D. Rockefeller could not do better. Perhaps he Uh, too had a clever wife. Why perhaps soon will I not work? Is the strike at Tidewater Oil over? Is that why you are so happy? Is that the surprise you had to tell me? Perhaps I have a better surprise. Perhaps when we go home to Slovakia, we will have so much cash money. We will buy a castle on a river, uh, the Blue Danube. We will look out over all the beautiful forests and people will envy us. We did so well in America. (laughs) I think you have lost your mind with happiness. (laughs) Perhaps. Or I am just tired and hungry. Well, you have two jobs, Martin. You're working very hard. One is not a job. I am just holding a sign, waiting for this strike at the refinery to finish. Until then, your other job is also fine. But there is no shame being a night watchman at the railway. They pay like any other job. And when the strike at Tidewater Oil is over... The strike will end, yes. The bosses at Tidewater will settle the contract. 
then you will be happy to work. You will come home, you will scrub your hands of oil. No more night watchmen. Now, let me get the food. Oh, it was a hard day. On the picket line, the Tidewater men tease me again. Make sport. Why? Your mustache, your accent, your funny face. I know. English. Yes. They give me names in English. Bad names. Oh, they are silly men, Martin. Hovereli Mizratska, Nemetska Spina. You are no German swine. They are only baiting you. Uh, Ako Medved? Yes, like a bear, yes. To make a fight. Button your shirt, fix your tie. Always making fights. In America, they, they think I am a German, the bad enemy. Do not be the bear, Martin. Do not take the bait. I look weak, like a woman, if I do not fight. They are ignorant men. You know such a word. Ignorant. Yes, I fight ignorant Tidewater men for my honor. These men cannot tell between a German and a Slovak. Walk away from them, Manjel. Oh, yes, I must. Again, you are clever and wise. Oh, such a Manjelka I have. Remember what my father said. When someone tried to make a fight with him. Not my monkey, not my circus. Yes. Mancha, do not be their monkey. We came to get away from such fighting, from such a great war. You are no German. You are no one's enemy. They will come to see that, to understand. Do not hate them. It says in the Bible, turn the other cheek. So they can pluck the beard uh, of my other face? <laughs> the beard on the other side of your face. Your lovely face. Now, time for food. Sit. Oh, it is warm. No air. The breath does not come. Humid. Well, say it. Humid. 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 Vilke. Humid, yes. I understand. Fucking humid. Martin! Of all English for you to learn. I know. Yes. Today, I am happy. But with this happiness... Sometimes is sorrow and a fire inside. My heart is bursting. Sometimes I am so plain and avisti. We must get this hate from your heart. Must I go to these men on the picketing line? Tell them to leave my man shall be? How can I help you, Martin? How? What do I do? You agree. When the time comes to go home, to Slovakia, as you promised. Lubimcha. Sikrasna. Not beautiful. Tired. And there is a stink. I need a wash. You live for 20 years without me. Martin. I know I... Promised you I would go home. But here, in America, there is no war. We are free. I have worked so hard to learn English, to make friends. But you never smile anymore. My Eva, she smiled. All the time. Smile for me. Please. Yes, life here is hard. We both work all the time, but it is our dream. America. Things will get better. They have even now. Martin, I know you want to go home, but this place, Jersey City, this flat, it is where we are safe from that wretched war. You are maybe safe, but what about me? What did I do to my co-workers? It is not just my accent or the way I look for them to call me a swine. You must try to be more like them. Not so formal or so loud with your opinions. If you do this, they will be friendly, welcoming, like our people at church. I have tried. They said to me, why did you come here? Do you love the Kaiser? They say I take good jobs from men who are born here. In America, there are enough jobs for everyone. Say to them, America is my country now. Yet to talk. Now, Zai?
Yes, really. It is your country. And I want our child born here. We can make it born back home. Come, Patrime. We belong in America. This is our domo. English. Home. This is our home. When you study, when you learn, as I did, your accent will go bye-bye. Hmm? After the strike, you can talk with the men at Tidewater Royal. Make a joke. Tease them. When you can do that, you will make friends. And when our child comes, it will speak English. It will be an American. We will be happy then. Then. In America, there is no then. Only now. Sometimes... What? I wish the Germans would capture America. You do not mean that. Yes, I do. I wish to show Americans they are not so clever. Marty! Parading like strutting roosters, knowing everything. They know nothing. The Germans will teach them things. Yes, they will. Well, you should be happy America is not in this war. Thank the Blessed Mother. And if they join it, it will be on the side of good, not the Germans. Ah, no. Tuck. There is a disagreement. So I go back. Maybe alone. You would do such a thing. Mož, no. Perhaps. Perhaps. Then I should not have married you. Wait. Eva. No. I, it was only my mouth. Shouting. Ignorant words. Such shouting will put us in danger. Many things put us in danger. America is a dangerous place. Have the men on the strike line heard this kind of talk? Or the other night watchmen? Has anyone at all heard this talk, Martin? They must never know you spoke of such things. It will be much worse than... Nothing is worse than this. This is why I am not happy most days. Nor are you, I think. There are some days when I am not happy. Sometimes there are days... What? My darling, there are days when what? I too think about home. I miss my mother and father. I miss the countryside. But there are things we must give up so our child will be safe. Listen to me. Tidewater Refinery will sign the labor contract. You will go back to work. To your peckle. You think this is hell, Manchel? Listen to me. Listen. If they really think you are German, or that you are on the side of the German, that will be hell. More than you can imagine. They will keep you from working. They will take your job away. They will l lock you up. Put you in jail for, for no reason. Both of us. Mancha, listen to me. Not if we go home. There will be nothing left of our home. You read the newspapers. You know what the Germans did in Belgium and France. The Hun are monsters. I will not go back to monsters. I will not raise our child among monsters. There are monsters here, Eva. Not like the Germans. Worse than the Germans. Net boring. Ogres. No, ogres. Why are you saying these things? I have seen Americans across the river in the city. They spit on us, shout at us, curse us. They say, you are the enemy. They hear my accent. They say, you are bad man. You must not listen to such people. People who are so ignorant. Those men on the strike line. People in New York City. How many languages do these Americans know? One. English. You are smarter than them. You have traveled. Been to Budapest. Praha. You, you speak three languages. Four with English. Stop worrying what other people think. Now. You must eat. Then, you must go to work. There are explosives in the rail cars, waiting to put into ships to go to England to fight this war. But we have extra watchmen, eight of us now. On patrol. We are lucky you got the job. My handsome night watchman. Yes. Lucky. Lucky. It is warm. Humid. 
There will be those flying bugs that bite at you. Mosquitoes. Yes. Awful creatures. Biting. Snap, snap. They feel with blood. I smash. Boom. They pop. There's only red. Blood. Like a burst heart. Like my burst heart. Which you make better, my darling Eva. I will smile now. You will smile with me? Yes? They are terrible things, these mosquitoes. We have uh, smoke pots. It keeps mosquitoes away. The pots are burning all night. Smoke pots? I see. Very clever. Oh, yes. Clever. Like my manjelka. Heavenly Father, thank you for the meal. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for my wife, my coming child, my two jobs. Help us be happy. Amen. Amen. Will you think about Slovakia, please? Munch. Eva, you promised! If I got the money, now I will do something. Something for you. Something good. You are always good to me. No, I cannot provide for my wife. My wife should not be at work. It is honorable work, Mancho. I am not a man watching you do these things. I will be a man for you. You are! You brought me to this country. You have given me a child. A child I cannot wait to keep. Of course you will keep our child. What are you talking about? I have thought much about our lives. This flat, one room. Toilet in the hall. Where is our house? A room for my son? <laughs> if I have a son. You are my handsome husband. With a large smile. The boy who kissed me in the cafe in Bratislava. When we came from the country to the city, the boy with the pomade in his hair, the dashing mustache, who said he would take me to America. And he did. Things are difficult now, but those good times will come again, Laskamoy. They will. When we go home, we will be so happy again because I have done something marvelous, Eva. For you and our child. You will be so proud of me. I gave it great thought before I did it. This good thing. This miracle. Oh, what, Martin? What have you done? What is this marvelous thing? It will... Yes? Get you and our child all those things. What things? Fine things. A good wife deserves fine things. Tell me. Tell me, please, what you have done. Here, look in my wallet. Five hundred dollars. See it? I would have to walk on the picket line for three years to make that. Where did you get this? Lepsiaknivite. Why is it better I do not know? Why must I not be a part of it? I do not understand. Why must I not know what this is? It is... Tiomstvo. Secret, yes. But you must tell me why a secret. Nivenklichtine. Talk shit, no, Kapuchova. English is better. The other immigrants who live here in the boarding house, their English is very little. The landlady speaks only Polish. English is safe. Tell me, Manjo, what you have done. On the causeway across the harbor last night, I was doing my inspection. After midnight, out of the dark, two men appeared with lanterns. I asked to see their papers. They were from the government, Nemetska Vlada. The German government? Oh, they work for the German ambassador in Washington. They are very smart men, very knowledgeable. They knew I had worked on the railway line to Black Tom Island as a night watchman for several months. 
They knew I was on strike from the Tidewater Royal. They knew we were short for cash. I do not know how. They knew everything, Eva. What else? They knew also I have been unhappy. They said they could make everything better, that life would be easier for us. They said I would be such a man to come home with so many American dollars in my pocket. My wife would love me more, want to give me many children. That I would no longer have to be a night watchman. They would give me $500 if I helped them. Help them do what? This is why I was wearing a coat in the heat. I was hiding this satchel. Oh, careful, don't touch it. It is fragile. They asked me to collect it tonight at a bar. Keep it at my flat. What else did they ask? I will bring the satchel to work tonight. While I am patrolling the causeway to Black Tom Island, I will allow the men onto the railway tracks. I will give them the satchel when they arrive after midnight. I will walk away into the night, not returning to my patrol. I do not understand what is in the satchel. Some metal tubes filled with what? I don't know. It's such a simple thing to do, but this simple thing means I am a provider again, Eva. I can provide for you and our child, as I promised. And as you promised, we can go home. Where are you going? Why are you not happy? This is not a good thing, Martin. Of course it is. It is a fine thing, a clever thing. You agree to carry something. You don't know what it is. How foolish you are. I did it so you would love me again. Where does this thought come from? Why have you put this thought in, into your head? I must go to work now. If you do this thing, Martin, that I believe is not good, I will not love you anymore. I cannot love a man who does such a stupid, dangerous thing. What were you thinking? You could be holding bombs. You could be causing a murder. But the money, the, the satchel You must is... leave the satchel. Do not take it to work. But the men, Eva... Give them back their money. Uh, uh, tell the men you'll change your mind. They will be angry. Then you must go get the policeman. T tell them who these men are. But the money... I will not touch that money. Do you understand? If you keep that money, you will be the person those others accuse you of being. You will be a German. But what if they hurt me, these men, if I do not give them the satchel? We must go. Now, to the police, with the satchel and the money. The police will not believe us. They will. They must. I want the money, Eva. I want it for us. I want to go home. You want to hurt America because it hurts you. I want you to be proud of me. Giving the men that satchel, letting them onto the rail line, will not make me proud. No? No. It will make me hate you. It is a good thing. It will help us. I should have never met you that promise about getting money to go home. Look what it has done. I know you are trying to do a good thing. I, I wish you we could keep the money. You must give it and the satchel to the police. But the men will come for us. The police will hide us from these men. The police hate us, Eva. They hate us. It is their job to look after us, to help us. On the streets, they are beating our people, writing down their names, deporting them. No, no, no. We them. are doing an honorable thing. The police will believe us. Oh, now who is the foolish Martin, one? Martin! We answer the telephones. We uh, dirty their hands with their oil, protect their rail cars. What do they see when they look at us? Dirt. Filth, scum, but the Germans, they are not ogres. They could make our lives better. I think God has sent them to us. If you do this thing, Manchel, I will not be here when you return. Campodete. The costeller. What is Prosco? I will find you. I will... I what? Will... What will you do? I will not come to the door. I will not see you. You will if I have many hundreds of dollars. I did not come this way to hurt this country. Wickedness was not on my mind when I got on that ship, when I sat in the hold with the others, when I cried for home, when I was sick, when I thought I was going to die. I will come to the church door. Father Prosco will hide me. I will break down the door. I will be gone. I will disappear. You have no money. I will make money working at the church. 
for me and my child. I will work day and night. I will pretend you are dead. You would do these things? To save my soul, Martin. Yes. Yes, I would do these things. Tak. Tak. If I give the satchel to the police, the bad men will hurt me. Perhaps you and our child. And if I give the satchel to the bad man... I will go. With your child. That is certain. The other is a... a... gamble. I am that gambler. Hello. You are the only gamble I ever won. I must clean the dishes. The creatures that come at night, the little black creatures, they are so quick. I must not leave out the food. They like the food. It was your moustache I loved first. And your eyes. Like the eyes of a puppy dog. So dark. Gentle. Your long lashes. Like a girl. Your teeth. You have uh, fine teeth, I think. There is fine teeth in my family. Your father has fine teeth. So does my mother. We must write them about the child. Oh, they will be so happy. Excited. <laughs> they will dance. Thanking God. <laughs> we will name our son Charlie. Hmm? Like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> we will uh, buy him a hat and a cane. Yes. <laughs> And the funny moustache, <laughs> like his papa. <laughs> Martin, how does it work that we forget so quickly? Life was normal. How, how is it possible? I do not know. How can we be happy in such a moment? How can such a moment be? Eva. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to ever go. The thing I loved about you first, your kindness. You were so kind. Few people are. <laughs> How could you take that money? What kind of person are you? I am your Martin. How can I love someone and not know the kind of monster he is? Eva, my darling, do not cry. No, please. Please. I will go to the police. I will tell them of the satchel. You must pack our things. Be ready to leave when I am back. Uh, Father Prosco will hide us from the bad men. You will be ready, yes? When I come back? We will be waiting for you. Me and Charlie. Go, Mancha. Go! Now! Two o'clock. Where is he, Charlie? Where is your papa? Perhaps the police have kept him in their jail. They are making him the bad fellow. Then the German men will come. <gasps> what was that? An explosion? No, 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 please. No, it can't be. Did he do this for us? For me? 
What have I done? What have I done? <gasps> Your papa might be hurt, Charlie. He might be dead. We, we must go find him, Charlie. <gasps> Two days later, in the rectory of Our Lady of Chechtahova Catholic Church, Jersey City, the office of Father Prosko, a Polish immigrant priest. Prosko is speaking to Detective Tim McMillan, who's come from New York City. Say again, Father. <sighs> Czech to ho va. Polish. Yes. Like you? Yes. That's a rather severe face. Anxious? <laughs> no. You've bitten your fingernails to the quick. It would be a nasty habit from childhood. My mother used to put red pepper oil on my fingernails to make me stop biting them. You worry a lot as a kid? Young boys worry. And the world... It's a confusing place. You worried about Mrs. Babick? Where is she? It's past noon. I never worried when I was young. Always knew what was right and wrong. Yes? That's why I became a detective. It's my way of serving the Lord. We each serve in our own way. You don't like me, do you, Father? Why would you say such a thing? Being a detective, I'm a details man. Details can make all the difference in a case. Some say God is in the details. I say the devil is in the details. What are the details here? You won't meet my eye. You're scowling. You said you'd have Mrs. Babbick here by noon. It's past noon. Then there's those sad, defeated fingernails. You don't like that you've agreed to help me, do you? You don't like me at all, isn't that right? The only Pinkerton detectives I have known were brutal men. Men who were not kind. Most of them were quite vicious as they did their work in secret. Undercover, you mean? Pretending to be union men. They were strike breakers. Scabs. In Pennsylvania coal mines. We don't do scabbing, Father. Mm, but you hired them to break unions. I could not like a man who breaks a union. Feeling guilty about helping me, are we, Father? So this painting on your desk, that's supposed to be Our Lady? Yes. The icon is a copy of the one in the church in Czestochowa, Poland. It is here in my office where we have some work done in the church to fix some damage. It's to keep it safe. When did you come here from Poland? That should matter to you why. I am an American. Are you? You are questioning me now. I think you are questioning me. It's beautiful. The icon. Mysterious. I like a good mystery. It must be useful in your work. Why is that lady so dark, then? She's not meant to be a colored woman, is she? No. She's just called the Black Madonna. 
When did you work in Pennsylvania? Maybe we met up there once. Maybe you were helping the coal miners. Maybe you knew the Molly Maguires. <laughs> you can breathe easy, Father. I've never been west of the Delaware River. Now, this black Madonna, are you sure she's not colored? She is called the Black Madonna because the icon has been there in the church in Poland for many years. And it is the soot from the burning candles, the smoke that makes her black. When the copy was made, she was black like the original. No mystery there. It's not just mysteries. I've always asked questions. Why don't flying bats weigh more than a bumblebee? Why is my ma and da's hair jet black when mine's copper red? Maybe my da's not my real da. The world is full of unanswered questions, Father. Perhaps that is why you are a detective. I was educated by the Jesuits. Maybe there's your answer. I'll get Mrs. Babak. Be kind. She is quite fragile. So I hear. You do not listen to gossip, I hope. I talked to the landlady. She said Mrs. Babak could barely speak after the explosion. None of the others in the boarding house would talk. All immigrants. Most of them don't speak a word of English. Hard to get answers from people who can't speak English. It's hard to get answers because they are afraid. Of what? Other immigrants. No one knows who is a friend who will speak against you. Now this landlady, she is an immigrant herself, yet in the past, she turned other immigrants over to the police. And perhaps she gets a reward. I wouldn't know about that. It should not be like that in America. Are you a Judas too, Mr. McMillan? Go get Mrs. Babbick, Father. Perhaps you could question her tomorrow. Father, I understand you feel this need to protect her. I am doing no protecting. Then why did the Jersey police say you wouldn't let her speak to them? Nor the New York police neither. I know she's upset, but she's got to talk to someone. I won't be rough with her. I won't do her any harm. Or hurt her baby. You have knowledge of the child? The landlady told me Mrs. Babbick's expecting. Did this landlady also tell you she threw Mrs. Babbick into the street? She told me she felt it was the proper thing to do. Sunday morning, while Mrs. Babbick was out looking for her husband, this landlady met men into Mrs. Babbick's apartment. They were looking for something. They destroyed all the things inside the flat, leaving only that small statue of the Virgin which Mrs. Babek brought here with her. The Babek saved their money beneath that statue. This man even took the four dollars hidden there. And she prays to that statue every hour for Martin. Now, on Sunday morning, when Mrs. Babek went to the railroad causeway to see if she could find Martin, she was turned back by the police. They struck her, bruised her face, made fun of her axe and told her to go home. When she came home, all her belongings were ruined. Her money was gone. So the kind landlady threw her out. Mrs. Babak had no place to go, no family. She came here. We had to clothe her with donations to the poor. Father, you got a big heart. I know you also helped coal miners in Pennsylvania, but those miners were breaking the law. I heard you helped other criminals too since then. Who would tell you such lies? Most undesirable immigrants are criminals. Bomb throwers, murderers, anarchists. Father, I have it a very good word. You've given anarchist sanctuary in this church. I was right not to like you, Mr. McMillan. Shall I talk to the authorities about what you've been doing here? Have them close this place down? Lock its doors tight? I can have you sent to another parish. You're probably hiding a few undesirables in your basement right now. Don't make me do that, Father. Oh, yes, you are a Pinkerton. Bring Mrs. Babbick here, please. She is a good woman. Decent. Hardworking. 
like all immigrants who come here. This has nothing to do with Mrs. Babak being an immigrant. Have you or the police spoken to the wives of the other night watchmen? No, because all those men were born here in America. Martin is the only night watchman who is missing. He is the only immigrant who worked on the causeway to the island. Deny it if you will. But this is about immigrants. I'm waiting, Father. She has lost so much in only two days. She is so alone. She must have other relatives here in the States. There is only Martin. Maybe we'll find him. Maybe he's innocent. Yes. I'm sure you think he is innocent. You and your pinker tents. I won't keep her long, just a few minutes. She has lost her husband, perhaps. She has lost her home. She lost the income from her husband's job, from the two jobs he was working to support his family. Mrs. Babak has lost her reputation, and you are going to help her. <laughs> you think Martin was part of this terrible explosion, that he was connected to it. Well, it's what you come here and demand to talk to a grieving woman. Some of us believe Martin was killed in the explosion. Perhaps his body was torn apart, blown into the water. Perhaps he drowned. Perhaps his wife can tell me where he is. His wife has lost everything. Except that child in her belly and this job she has here with us. Knowing how much people like to gossip. They will force us to let her go from this job. This is not the America Martin and Eva dreamed of. Where is the kindness? Hmm? Where is the goodness in the American people I know? Where is the America I too came here for? The America I love as much as I love my Poland, my other home. For the love of God, sir. Leave this poor woman alone. Father Prosco, it would be a great shame to the good Catholics of Jersey City if this church was to be closed. All those fine deeds you do, God's work. Father, if you want me to, I can go to Mrs. Babbick's room and talk to her there. Now, are you going to get her or not? Hello, Mrs. Babbitt. Thank you for seeing me. Have a seat, please. Father, you can go now. Mrs. Babbitt and I need to talk in private. I think not. You don't need to be here, Father. She needs to be protected from you, I think. I'm not going to hurt her. Just a few questions. Yeah, that is what other Pinkertons have said to me in the past. I will sit at my desk. Mrs. Babbitt, I'm Detective McMillan. Jim Wimancho. What did she say? She asks where her husband is. I thought she spoke English. Mam problem is moyo anglicina. Today she's having trouble with her English. But she can understand me. Ano. So she doesn't understand? She understands. The Slovak word for yes is ano. It's confusing. Mrs. Babak, when did you last see your husband? people come? Not since before the explosion. Why is your English so poor today? She asks again, where is Martin? Mrs. Babak, why are you having trouble with your English? She says her head, her mind does not work well since her husband went away. Hmm. She asks why she must speak to a policeman. She thought you came here to tell her Martin was dead. I'm not with the police. I'm a Pinkerton. What does that mean? Tinto Pinkerton. 
What was that all about? She asks what that means, Pinkerton. I told her. Mrs. Babak, you need to speak English. You understand? And Father Prosco will only help you when he absolutely must. Speak English. She wants to see your identification. Here's my badge. No. Your identity card, please. See? It says here, I work for the Pinkerton Detective Agency. We were employed by the owners of the Lehigh Valley Railway. I'm here because several important men in our company are in jail, charged with manslaughter, because of the explosion in the harbor early Sunday morning. Zabichi, I don't Why would these men from the railway be charged with manslaughter? There were explosives on the Lehigh Valley rail cars out on the causeway to Black Tom Island. The men from the railway were charged with manslaughter because they hadn't paid a $25 fee to leave the explosives in the rail cars. How many languages do you speak, Mrs. Babak? Slovensky, Czeska, English, Czechia, niektory Polski. Slovak, Czech, English, and some Polish. You are very well educated. For an immigrant. Continue, please. Those explosives were waiting to be loaded onto a steamship bound for England to fight the Germans. But they exploded in the middle of the night before they could be put on board. The police blamed the mosquito pots the workers had burning that night. They said the railway was at fault, so these men from the railway company were blamed. I need to find out what really caused the explosion so these men can go free. You are looking for Martin because you think he knows something? Yes. My husband committed no crime. Nietzsche, nothing. You sound very sure of that, Mrs. Babak. Martin would never do such a thing. Set off bombs to make an explosion. I never said anything about bombs. How else would you blow up such explosives? You seem to know they were bombs. Maybe bombs your husband had? My husband had no bombs. You haven't seen your husband since before the explosion, is that right? Yes. When did you last see Mr. Babak? Saturday morning. Then her husband went to walk on the picket line. The landlady said Mr. Babak was home Saturday night for half an hour before he went to his night watchman job on the railway causeway to Black Tom Island. Mrs. Babak. What did she say? The landlady is a liar. The landlady also said your husband had a satchel when he came in. How could there be a bag? He did not come home. Uh, Mrs. Babak, please, try to remember about Saturday evening. And perhaps you got confused. Perhaps you made a supper for Martin and he was there. Miss Lindsay, very cheap to Mutomushovi. Tanto detect you. No, no, Mrs. Babak, I do not believe him. I'm just. She's my priachel, it prosto. Of course I am trusting you, Mrs. Pavak. Mrs. I will look after you. I am only saying, please, think again. Perhaps you were confused by the heat, yes? Ugh, this awful heat. Martin and I are not villains. This man is a villain. A portenye, a portenye. What did you say to her father? Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. What exactly did you say? I shall to be cautious, speak with care, mind her temper. You said all that in one word. Do you think I am lying to you? I was believing you, Mr. McMillan. I was starting to see your side. Now, you call me a liar? Because we speak another language? Perhaps we are traitors. Is that how you see immigrants? Your family too is an immigrant once. Leave me alone with Mrs. Babak. I would sooner burn and hell than leave her alone with you. Go ahead and threaten me again, Pinkerton. I said get the hell out of here. Mojitist. She sees it? Anna. Anna. I'll just be in the hallway, Mrs. Babak.
Mrs. Babak, I can help you and Martin. I promise. But I need to know where he is. Tell me about the explosion. You don't know about it? I could not bear to hear it. Or read it in the paper. You will tell me. Please. It blew out nearly every single window south of 44th Street in Manhattan. Up and down the avenues. And the cross streets. Glass everywhere. People felt the blast in Philadelphia, all the way up from Maryland up to Hartford. How many souls were lost? We think about ten. It was late at night. People were asleep. Otherwise... Yes. I see. Sometimes, Mr. McMillan, I do not believe in God. Do not tell Father Prostko. No. Perhaps the church walls will tumble down on me. Mrs. Babak, I'm not a bad man. I'm a Catholic. I'm Irish. I don't hate immigrants. You are doing your job to find the truth, to get your bosses out of jail. I cannot help you. I do not know what is the truth. I am losing my mind sometimes, I think. Missing Martin, wanting him to come home. I keep thinking he will come home. You're full of grief, missus. Enough for you and your child. There is grief. Fear, also. What if Martin does not come home? How do I go by myself? Live my life? Start again? In this world? A war? Explosions? Hatred. So much hatred. When I was a boy, my mother used to say, cry it out, Tim. Cry it out and it won't frighten you anymore. Your mother is a wise woman. Was. Was wise. Tuberculosis got her. Oh. I miss her. I miss my mother. Is she? No. She is alive in Slovakia. I will tell my child, my Charlie... To do as your mother advised. Mr. Macmillan, you say you can help Martin when we find him. We? I don't know where he is, but we could look together. There's something I need to know first. Yes? Did your husband ever express support for the Germans? Support? How support? Did he speak well of them? Back them in the war? Did he ever take sides? Did he ever speak ill of America? Ever expressed interest in going back to Europe? Martin is loyal. He believes in America. I spoke to some men he worked with. They said Martin hated America. No, 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 no. He called the railway owners, the owners of the oil company, America's aristocracy. He left Europe to get away from the rich families who controlled his life, but they were here too. If the police find out he said those things, they will blame the explosion on him. And you. You'll be deported. You know what that means? Deported? They can do this. Deport me? Back to the war? Of course they can. You're in danger here, in this church. Father Prosco has been hiding all sorts of undesirable aliens, giving them sanctuary. He might even be hiding Martin. Men from my company are outside right now watching this church. If Martin was hiding here, I would know. He would have contacted me. Not a note. Not a message or, or a phone call. Nietzsche. Nothing. Mr. Macmillan, what do I need to do for you to help me? Tell me the truth. Everything you know, I'll be on your side. I'll help you both. What? I think there are things you have been keeping from me about what happened to Martin when he disappeared. You cannot be on my side if I do not know these things. Here. Read this. From today's New York Press. There was... 69 freight train cars on the causeway that night, filled with dynamite 
What does this have to do with Martin? There were more munitions on the island's warehouses and 50 tons of TNT on Johnson Barge 17. Dock workers called them powder pieces. Know how much dynamite that is? 100,000 pounds. Over 2 million pounds of explosives total. Just before 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, the Jersey City Fire Brigade received a call from the island, saying there were small fires on the pier and under the railway cars. The workers and the night watchmen tried to put out the fires, but they spread. The men called the firehouse again. They were told to get out of there, run, quick as they could. They started for the mainland. Martin was with them? No one remembers seeing him. There was so much shouting, screaming. Men were pouring seawater on the flames. No one could figure out what caused so many fires. You said there were smoke pots for the bugs. Martin said so too. He did? When did he say that, Mrs. Babbock? I I don't remember, but you said the police think the smoke pots started the fires. How could a few smoke pots start a fire on a causeway a mile long? Perhaps a wind was blowing from the smoke pots. There was no wind that night. It was something else, wasn't it, Mrs. Babbock? All those men ran a mile down the causeway. At the mainland, they met the fire brigade. Even those brave souls were too frightened to go towards the burning railway cars, knowing what was on board them. Martin would have been frightened also of the smoke and noise. The rail cars exploded first. The warehouses went next. Massive fireballs lit up the sky. Then, Barge 17 blew. An explosion like nothing ever seen on this earth made by men. People in Battery Park watching said the sky was so orange it was like a sunrise. That explosion ripped through the arm of Lady Liberty, her arm holding the torch. Wait, no more. I understand. Shrapnel from that explosion tore through the sky all the way up to Journal Square, two miles away. The shrapnel pierced the square's clock tower, stopping the clock. I said no more, please. You wanted everything, Mrs. Babbock? Well, I'm going to tell you everything about how the Coast Guard and the police had to evacuate Ellis Island. All those immigrants, women and children, wailing, screaming, throwing themselves on the ground. I will not listen. Grown men weeping, begging in a hundred different tongues to be sent back to Europe, South America, Africa, away from this wretched land of fire and death. That's what happened the night your husband disappeared. You are telling me Martin could not have survived such a hell as that. I am telling you he somehow got off the causeway before the explosion. Why would he do that? I don't know, Mrs. Babbock. You tell me. You're the one who brought up bombs. You know what I am thinking? (sighs) No. Martin is dead. But you need for him to be alive. So you can blame this bad thing on him. I will go back to my room now, Mr. McMillan. At 8 a.m. Sunday morning, a man showed up at the Jersey City Police Station. He said his name was Martin Babbock. He is alive. Martin is alive. The man told the police he had caused the explosions. But that is not true. It is not possible. The man said he was hired by German spies to carry a satchel. Spies working for the German ambassador in Washington. When the man got to work on Saturday night, the spies were waiting. He escorted the spies along the causeway. They told the men to leave. He returned to Jersey City, hid until morning. Then he turned himself in. Is he still at the police station? Oh, please tell me he is there. I must see him. The police told the men the story was absurd. The police captain, who is of German descent, said American Germans would never do such a thing. President Wilson said the same thing last night to the newspapers. I want to see him. I want to see my Martin. Please, take me to the station. They let him go. No. No! They let him go, Mrs. Babbock. The stupid fools let him go. Why haven't I heard from him? Why hasn't he come to me? Is that the truth? Yes, please! There are things I must say to him. Things he must hear from me. We must find him. We must look everywhere. That's what I've been doing for two days. We will locate him, yes? The two of us. I will help you. Why do you look at me so? We must go to your station house. Gather men together. Search for Martin. Mrs. Babbock. Why are we talking? Why Why are we wasting this time? Mrs. Babbock, you, calm you down. You came here when I am mourning the loss of my mantle. You, you lied to me. You are a liar. 
You lied about the satchel. The landlady could not have seen this. No, no, Martin, he hid it under his coat when he came in. I said to him, why to wear a coat when it is so warm? He said he had a surprise. He put the satchel under his coat when he left. No one saw it. Except you. He brought it home with him. He told me what he was to do with it. He was doing it for us. I begged him not to do it. I said I would leave him. That he would never see me or our child. I convinced him of it. He left to take the satchel to the police to turn himself in. Why didn't he do it? Maybe the German men stopped him on the way. Maybe they took the satchel from him. Maybe they forced him to take them to the causeway. Did he come back after that, Mrs. Babick? Did you see him again? No. I think the bad men made him do this thing. I think he was ashamed after he kept their money. He he went to the police. He knew I would think he did this bad thing, this, this explosion. But he did not. I am sure of it. I am sure. I'm taking you to the police. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Do you remember what I told you earlier, Father, about hiding people? Say one word and I'll burn this place down. You'll go to jail. You want to risk losing everything you've worked for for a lousy bunch of emigrants? Please don't let me. Please. Where are you taking her? You don't need to know. Just lock the rectory doors when we're gone. No, Brosco, do not let him take me. He has hurt me. Let her alone. Martin. Alive, alive, Jackie Shishovi. Okay, Where was he, father? In the coal cellar? He asked for sanctuary. Like the others? Let my manjalka go. Please, take me. No! I went to look for you on the causeway. Some policemen pushed me. I, I cut my face. But, but I am all right. So is Charlie. I have done this to you. The shit call. Martin. You must tell the Pinkerton man what happened. After you left, on Saturday night, he must know the whole story. M- maybe he will help us. He he promised he would. Talk to him, Martin. Perhaps he will keep his word. Eva, you must believe me. I went for the police station with the satchel. Then the men who work for the Germans, they saw me. They ran after me. They make me walk them to the causeway. What you told the police was true. You know what I told to the police? Mr. Macmillan told me. Did he? When the men took the satchel, I asked if I could go back home. They said they did not trust me. One of the men pointed a gun at me, so I jumped into the water. Into the sea? Yes. Then the man shot his gun at me. I stay under the water until my chest hurt. Swear to me. Swear on Our Lady that you say the truth. Swear it. Yes, I swear on Our Lady. Do you believe me, Eva? You ought to believe him, Mrs. Babick. It's the truth. See, it is good. He is on our no, side. That is not what he said. Martin, this man will help us. No, he will prove the ultimate... What did he say to you, Mrs. Babick? What did you say to her? He told me... You are the man who shot his gun at Martin that night. Your husband isn't the only man who has two jobs, Mrs. Babbick. The Jesuits have failed you, Mr. McMillan. You are a very bad man. I'm a loyal American, on the side of the Germans. The Brits have been killing people for hundreds of years. India, Africa, my people in Ireland. Someone has to stop them. Now. Mr. and Mrs. Babbick, you're coming with me. To the police. He will not take us to the police, Eva. Where will he take us? No, no. You would not kill us, Bolt. And our child? Father Prosco knows also what you have done. Will you kill him too? What did the Jesuits teach you, Mr. McMillan? About killing and murder? Please, please, no. We will not speak of this to anyone. Let's go. No. Ah! Ah! Stop! 
I will spare your life, detective. If you spare ours. I have a friend at the steamship company. There's a ship leaving for Genoa. Tonight. I'll take you to Manhattan. You will both get on that boat. I will watch you go, yes? What will you tell your employers at the railway? Once you're gone, I'll tell the police it was you who set the fires. You made the explosion. You escaped. The bosses at the railway will be let go. Uh, a fine solution. Yes, uh, we will do that. You can lend us the money for the tickets, please? What happened to the $500? I lost the money in the sea when I was swimming away. There is one more thing. You will let my wife stay here. Please. She is afraid to go back to the no, war. No, Martin. I want to go with you. Listen to me. Listen. <laughs> How do we know this man will not take us somewhere on the way to the steamship and kill us? I, I do not care about me, but you will stay here. Takversurasil, Martin. He has agreed to nothing. We have to trust him. Oh, you talk of morals. How does a man keep his morals in a world like this? I have learned that from you. I want us to go home together. Lubimcha. Navishti. Even if he lets us live, I will not take you and Charlie back to that war. Never. Where then is our home now? We have no home now, Eva. I have seen to that. You must stay. If she stays behind, I can't guarantee she'll be safe. Now, once people know for sure her husband caused that explosion and that Father Prosco gave you both sanctuary, a mob might try to storm the place. Isn't that right, Father? I'm not taking her with me. Then we need to go, Babak, now. Angelka. Angela. I am the cause of these marks on your face. They will heal. Uh, Mr. McMillan. I can say a prayer to the Virgin? You will let me do that? Sure. Just be quick. Nebetsky otek. Zakrani moje zenu. Moje dita. Poto im dovo. Ak mam zamreit. Zakran moje disho. Amen. Promise you will not hurt her, Mr. McMillan. Promise me. Please. We better go. Eva, the statue of the Blessed Virgin. She hides all her secrets and prayers in her heart. Pray to her for my safety. Pray hard for me, Eva. Martin! Mrs. Babak, do not move. I will walk them out. Stay right here. We must pray for him, Charlie. We must pray to the Virgin for the three of us. They are gone. The door to the rectory is locked. No one can enter. There are many of Mr. McMillan's men outside. I will go to your room. I will get your things. We will leave this place. We will go to the train station. I will buy our tickets for some place far away. Montana, Idaho. Those men outside. We'll come for the two of us now. There is no way out. There is a way behind the rectory, through the church. There is a passage to the street. They will not see us. What is Prosko? You cannot leave your church. Your people here. I cannot stay. Not now. We will go together. I will look after you, Eva. Both of you. Martin figured it out. Down in the coal cellar when we spoke. He knew you would try to go with him. He knew. He did what he did so you could live. You and Charlie. Be strong. Be strong for your little boy. We will be safe. I promise. Pray to her for my safety. Pray hard for me. The statue... Where we kept our money. <gasps> Mancha. Oh, Mancha.
Anja, you did not lose the five hundred dollars in the sea. You hid it here. For us. For me and Charlie. Oh, my husband. Thank you. Thank you. Mancho. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Art House Productions radio play of Black Tom Island. If you enjoyed this radio play and you'd like to help support the production, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. Black Tom Island was written by Martin Casella, directed by Darren Lee, with sound design by Megumi Katayama. The role of Martin Babick was played by Mason Hensley. Ava Babick was played by Jenna Krasowski. Father Prosco was played by Damien Bazzario, and Tim McMillan was played by Michael Stewart Allen. I'm Art House's executive director, Meredith Burns, and I also read the narration. Art House's staff also includes producing director Courtney Little, who also cast the production, theater manager Miranda Dahl, who also stage managed, and gallery director Andrea McKenna. Special thanks to Alan Maraoka the Art House Productions Board of Trustees, and to our interns, Anandita Bali and Veronica Gagliardi, and Emmanuel Vozos for the poster art. Black Tom Island was made possible in part by the Hudson County History Partnership Program Grant. Art House Productions is supported by the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. Black Tom Island was originally commissioned and produced by Premier Stages at Kane University in Union, New Jersey. Art House Productions is a 501c3 nonprofit arts organization committed to the development and presentation of the performing and visual arts in Jersey City, New Jersey. Art House Productions produces and presents original theater, arts events, visual arts, adult and youth arts education classes, festivals including Your Move, New Jersey's Modern Dance Festival, the Jersey City Comedy Festival, and JC Fridays. For more information about our programs or to make a donation, please visit our website at www.arthouseproductions.org. <laughs>